Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today I'm going to be talking about Morbius. This is a weird movie for me. I was in a October get ready for my horror movies mood and I started thinking about things that I've passed up or missed and Morbius was one of them. It's a Marvel comics movie. It is I think more associated with Sony, so it fits more in the Venom universe, because he actually mentions it in the movie. The movie is directed by Daniel Espinosa, written by Matt Cezana and Burke Shapless. And I gotta admit, Jared Leto, Matt Smith, Adria Arjona, Jared Harris, Al Madrigal, and Tyrese Gibson. Uh, starring in it. This feels weird. It's a... I like the movie, and I don't think I should. <laughs> Is that a weird thing? Maybe it's going to fit into my... No, I think it's better than Venom. And this is a weird movie. It's basically based on a Marvel Comics character that's very obscure and more of a Spider-Man anti-hero villain friend sometimes character who's trying to find his way in this Marvel Comics world and he's not a traditional vampire in the comics either and it's shown in the movie also but it's the same themes right um, a doctor growing up uh, you know gifted in sciences looking for a cure for a blood disease it's the basic everything in a nutshell and in coming to the cure just like most of these Spider-Man type movies, there's always a hybrid thing like, uh, you know, Electro was the eel and, you know, so on and so forth. A blending of animals and humans. He's looking for the cure in Vampire Bats and he's the first test subject and he becomes a vampire in a general sense. And I think they'll keep it more straightforward here. But in the comics, it's a little different where he has like suckers on his hands and stuff and it's a more of an energy based thing but it maybe has different iterations in the comic book but i gotta say i enjoyed the movie i thought the acting was good um the chemistry was surprisingly well and some of the things that i thought were um maybe not as high quality it made me feel like watching one of my favorite um, monster movies when I was younger on TV. If that's what they're going for, it's a success, but I don't know how this was ever even released and how it was, um, you know, was it decided that this wasn't going to be a movie that they threw into, um, uh, you know, the big movie theaters or was it going to go to a, uh, you know, a streaming service? It has that feel to it, but I don't know if this Sony Marvel MCU universe thing was ever going to blend well. But if you're looking at it from a Sony point of view, I think I like this better than like any movie they've made other than the Spider-Man movies. So I don't know where this fits. I, I see the flaws in this movie. I like the artistic choices they made. Some of the directing and the, atmosphere that was put into the movie but uh cutting to the chase it almost falls apart at the end with the overuse of special effects in the big fight now this is something that happens in a lot of superhero movies and a lot of um action movies in a sense and it suffers from that and you could say you know if you fuck up the end of the movie you know, it could ruin your experience, and yeah, I guess so, but if it wasn't for a, you know, a slight headache I had to begin with, my enjoyment going into this movie was there in anticipation of watching a movie like Christine, uh, you know, something that is, like, weirdly unbelievable, but it captures your attention, and I'm not really into fucking vampire, like, me and my friend have this discussion a lot about vampire movies, and I think um, when Underworld came out with Kate Beckinsale, I think it was, that hit a peak, and I was really interested, and 
even werewolves were brought back into the um you know the zeitgeist and uh, it was a really good movie and it's i guess its sequels were okay and enjoyable but after that there's a lull and there's a non-excitement about vampires and maybe it has to do with twilight and bullshit but it just you know tv shows and zombies like it's kind of lulled for me and I'm not saying there's not quality stuff out there it's just was it in my, you know, wheelhouse uh, that I'm going to choose when I'm interested in something? And when I do these podcasts, it's, you know, sometimes preparation, sometimes just spur of the moment. Oh, I just watched this and turned it on and just give my thoughts. I, I got this feeling of old Sunday night movies on Channel 13 where they would show Frankenstein or The Wolfman and Creature from the Black Lagoon. and this should get more credit in a sense, but the structure of the movie is a little weird. It's got a good base of me understanding and caring, and I was surprised at that too. The um, motivations for the characters, it's all there. And one of the things that I found myself like oddly enjoying was the quote-unquote villain of the movie's joy in getting the power. And I could look back and maybe uh, point out the critical flaws in the movie and where I maybe would agree that it's not a success. But if you're talking about someone turning the movie on, I think fucking Jad Leto is great in this. Um, I feel his character is corny as it could be at times and as serious as it wants to be. And it's um, dark tones, but, you know, trying to... And it maintains it, which is what I kind of appreciated. It doesn't go all over the place, which is something I hate about Venom. Where I would rather Venom have been a creepy in the shadows reveal of a symbiote type movie. And his struggle with this other thing in his body. I think this did it better. And I don't even enjoy the uh, general tone of those movies so i don't know if i i guess i'd sit around and watch the movies with my friends like it's, it's not, not something i would like roll my eyes at and like oh scoff at like i gotta watch this so i give some credit in entertainment and whatever you know you're gonna watch a movie i'm gonna recommend something like this i think that the police investigation of the cops was just subtle enough to not be overbearing and someone new to keep things out of the movie it's got that feeling to it and someone who has talent in doing things that maybe wasn't given enough like the old days of i'm not going to compare this with star wars but you know the stories you hear like when they're stuck with creative decisions to make and jaws like keeping the shark underwater and it adding to the movie I think someone went through this movie with talent and care and said, I'm going to make this the best I can. And I think it has to get credit for that. It kept my interest through the whole movie. Yes, it might be one of those movies, like I say, Green Lantern, where I know it's a bad movie. I think this one was probably made better. But in given what it's, you know, it tries to do, I'm impressed in a, in a way. When they're walking in New York City in the beginning with their uh, crutches and stuff, I felt that mass of people. I live in Brooklyn, New York. It really resonated with me. And although they put artistic flares in New York, and when you watch these, you know, new supernatural beings or superhuman beings now because of this, you know, uh, experimenting the cure for, the, for the cure, they add flares of things. And I appreciated some of it, or most of it, in fact. Uh, they're trying to give you the visualizations of, like, the way they sense wind and current and vibrations and colors and what would be happening on a almost, you know, microscopic level if I was slammed into a wall at 30 miles an hour. You know, you might see particles of my shirt and my, um, the things I'm wearing and the atmosphere around me get brought up in particulates and stuff. And you would see that with the normal eye. But what, do you, what would they see on a more microscopic scale? And 
It was that autistic flair they were trying to bring out. And I'm going to give them credit for it. Now, if I'm looking at this and, you know, and I'm some executive in an office, I don't know. I mean, I don't remember this movie being, you know, there's a lot of weird things going on in my life at different times, like everybody. But this is one of those things that kind of eluded me, and it just stayed on a, a part of my, under, uh, you know, knowledge of what was out there is not super interested, and it could go back to my vampire, you know, dislike these days, or the overabundance of zombie type things. And it, this wasn't even a decision for a Marvel movie, where I was looking for what I say is a maintained quality in all the Marvel movies. Yeah, we could say some are better than others, and you might roll your eyes at the methods and the formula they use. But I will debate that they're quality and high quality, and keep that sustained. But I was just thinking of, hey, it's October, horror movie, and a friend had mentioned it to me the other day, uh, Monday, I don't know, maybe two weeks ago, about two weeks ago. And I said, no, I didn't, that was on my list, but I never, really, I never got to it. So, in the vein of, and another thing is, I thought I saw um, a thing on Facebook about them doing Christine part two or a remake and it got me so excited to watch all my john carpenter movies and this came to mind and maybe it's the promo promo trailer or whatever i gonna admit to being a little surprised i was not expecting a movie that i enjoyed this much again i'm not gonna say i enjoyed it and it's that good but I will argue it's merits. It's, it's one of those things where you feel maybe that the love went into the movie. Someone had a great idea for a character that's obscure. And maybe he saw it fitting into the puzzle pieces that Sony wants to try to create. Because there are spoilers. Uh, an egg mid credit scene, mid, mid ed, end credit scene and an end credit scene type fucking thing. And it, it's a character you love and an actor you fucking love. And, like, were there sights on a bigger picture? This is part of the puzzle. They had a certain amount of money allotted to it. Okay, and I'm going to give Jared Leto fucking huge credit in this movie. They didn't overdo the fucking love thing with the way too pretty doctor, assistant type person, and obviously a twist maybe that'll happen with her at the end of the movie. But... I enjoyed the friendship thing, and I enjoyed the friend going, well, you're not fucking going to help me. And it resonated with me. And yeah, he got a little zany, and, and, but dancing and stuff with the power, literally dancing. But I found it like refreshing take on things. It just felt very real for the tone of the movie where Michael is realizing, uh, Morbius is realizing Jared Leto's character, that he's a monster. And he can't take back um, the damage he did in the beginning, even though he wasn't in his right mind, let's say. And now the decision he has to make, you know, because the movie's going with artificial blood and real blood, that type of conundrum. So he has worked all his life with this... Um, fake blood for lack of a better word plasma and um he uses it to get six hours at a time of uh gaining control over it instead of drinking blood and there are there are indications that drinking blood would make him stronger but more savage and more bloodlusty and i like that take where he's realizing what he's become what he has to do and where his best friend and brother that they like i bought that and yes could it have been elevated and was it elevated to a certain extent by jared leto i think so and it's just it's where all the little pieces don't align right but you see the you know the heart and the bulk of the story come through so i'm gonna give this a recommend like i'm gonna give this a pass I enjoyed this movie. Never looked at the clock. Never was wondering 
you know how much time or what was going to go on. And again, it seemed like there were mistakes happening, but were course corrected pretty quickly. And yes, they tried to do lots of little slow motion, almost full frame stops and some of the action to show the superhuman savage aspect of these human vampire hybrid type things. And I say that's where it fails. But again, if I'm looking at this as a story and I'm going to get through it, I'll let that pass in a way because of, you know, there was a fucking Vin Diesel movie that came out. And it was based on a comic book. I think it was like Deathstroke or something like that where, you know, soldier, experimental soldiers giving nanoparticles, right? Most thing I remember is the hotness. This woman was just too beautiful to be in the fucking movie. But that's those special effects and the way it interfered with the storytelling of the movie it just brought that movie down to where it wasn't a captivating story when it's, you know, revealed about who he is and how many, you know, what they've done to him and his quest for revenge. And I think this one balanced it well. It tried to put an artistic flair on probably a budget that they didn't really have to do a character like this. And like I said, I go back to maybe even watching movies that were in the movie theater but saw them on TV and were captivated by them. Again, I bring up Christine. And, you know, I just love that fucking movie. I watched it again recently because, like I said, October is my horror movie month. John Carpenter being one of my go-tos and there's Stephen King's adaptions. And, you know, this is something I'm going to watch again. <laughs> I am really surprised. Uh, and is it one of those, you know, it's just serviceable enough to be whatever, and I have certain biases? Maybe, and I can maybe relate to that, but again, I'm not into the vampire thing, and maybe it was one of those reasons why this was not watched by me sooner. Um, my bias could be that all the Marvel stuff I give a pretty good grade to because I think they're high quality, even if you don't agree with them. And the TV shows, I think they've been fucking awesome. I haven't caught up to She-Hulk, but I'll probably do a podcast on that. So yeah, I could go in there. But then again, like I'm dying to love and watch Peacemaker and even uh, branch off some products of where I don't think DC's doing a high quality take on things. So, you know... I don't know. I'm surprised. Uh, he, he and they, then they, I think they did a great job. I, the music wasn't too crazy. Uh, um, I felt every, um, you know, nuanced theme that they were trying to put in. And yeah, maybe it could have been, um, executed a little better. Like, am I that executive who says, you know, this is only, we're only giving so much to this movie? Because you hear things about, like, Batgirl being pulled, they pulled the plug on it right when it was getting ready to be fucking shopped around. And I think this is a testament to put it out there. Don't let these people work go to waste. Yeah, I'm sure people who are better than this, at, better at this than me, can really lead me through this and see the flaws and it's, structure and uh storytelling it's where the effects um just take away from the story and those are things i'm sort of aware of but in the general sense of sitting around with friends smoking a bowl and you know shooting the shit and throwing a movie on i think this is it meets the requirements and is very good like it's it's weird and this is, again, that feeling I get when I watch movies that I kind of know that aren't top-notch quality movies, but you just enjoy them. Maybe you can say that about the Matrix sequels in that way, too, where you know that these are the same people, their love is there for their product, and they're trying to tell their story, which you're really not agreeing with it. But um, the new Matrix movie gives me more of an impression of um, where it was a smaller story and it suffered from it. 
because we've had the Matrix movies. I think this does a good job of separating it and saying, this is what we had, you know, we did our best, and I'm glad it's out there. I'm glad Jared Leto got to do the performance and play the character, and I hope these people are proud of the product they put out. I don't think this is one of those fucking embarrassments that, you know, are ridiculed and um, ripped apart and... I'm trying to think of, like, um, maybe the first Suicide Squad, where you saw talented actresses and actors, but someone came together and reshot things and structured it because decisions were made. Whoever went through and saw, tried to fix this and make it, um, you know, a quality product should be given praise, then. Because I think this, this really gets there for me. And like I said, you want to follow the structure of the movie, it's got a solid theme you can follow yes it's in the theme of the vampires and you know you don't get out of that but it doesn't overdo a silly love thing it doesn't overdo the um actors and actors you know actresses um chemistry thing where they try to push things on you too much and there's a um there's an actor in this movie i think his name is jared francis harris the british actor this guy elevates fucking everything. And from the second he's in the movie, I am going, at the end, he's going to be fucking the guy. He will be behind everything. He will be the, you know, master manipulator. And he wasn't. Well, spoilers. He's really just a fucking doctor who cares for his patients and they grew up to be like his sons. And it's not overdone. And yeah, maybe you'll go, wait, how is this? But... I was just like working and you didn't see enough of it. This isn't a, you know, a eight hour weekly, you know, series where you had eight hours of showing them as a children and growing up and this doctor trying to help them. But I don't know how it works. It just works. And everything you see this guy in, he's great and you love him. Um, most notably, I could think of his fringe. Uh, and he just doesn't seem to, he seems to be the same age forever. <laughs> and I was so happy to see him in the movie. Again, I wasn't looking at going into this movie knowing who the actors are, who directed it, who, you know, who, you know, what was going on at all. It was just, oh, this is a more horror themed movie. And it caught my attention. It's Marvel. Oh, so there could be quality there. If, but it's a Sony Marvel. And although I love the, uh, aspects of the new spider-man movies there are things about them i don't enjoy a lot but uh I, i've done podcasts on them i i think they're good movies and the actors they're putting it all together i'm gonna give this a thumbs up i'm really gonna enjoy re revisiting this like i don't know what it is it's just the mood i'm in the um uh and, I, and i'm gonna be honest he mentions venom in this movie and a part of me went oh no like i'm not enjoying those movies and although the second one could be more of a fun romp to get through uh with woody harrelson in it it's uh not the right direction i thought i would have gone in this again not perfect it's not um stella everything but i think it does enough things that it resonated with me and I don't know if that's a great, you know, recommendation for people who are listening to this or will go, this is a god-awful movie. I don't know why the fuck you're watching it. I'm going to, I would argue that. I would debate, no. I, I think this is a decent movie that someone took care and love into making it so it wasn't shelled and it wasn't, um, you know, a wasted effort where people got paid for their job and the cut and the studio say well fuck you we own the merchandise and i'm glad this is out there and it makes me hopeful for things like batgirl who from all i can read and, and here's it by the way there's the spoiler thing about michael keaton being in this was the same thing with batgirl because spoilers yeah fucking whatever um michael keaton from the spider-man movies is a vulture and he's does the end scene cameo type thing because of the Doctor Strange multiverse thing. And you're just smiling. You're like, 
And this is the same thing with Batgirl. Batgirl was supposed to be showing Michael Keaton in the bat suit, older. And from from what I read and looked into, people are really like, this is a quality movie, whatever, just because you want to shelve it and quote unquote tax reasons or whatever. People want to see it. And I think this is part of why I like this movie also. It gives you that feeling of um, talented people who are, you know, trying to do their best with a product that is obscure and maybe they're not giving enough money. And I think it, I think it makes it really enjoyable for me. And it could be just my personality, the way I, I approach things. But I've done enough of these podcasts where I can go, look, I went into this fucking full blast, stoned, in a good mood, and this movie is fucking, just this resonates terrible. Like, and I try to put myself in that position and introspective when I do these podcasts, but this is a little bit of a, this is a surprise for me. Jared Leto, I don't even know who the fuck he is, really. Um, uh, you know, I hear his name here and there, and I'm gonna guess, uh, I thought he had something to do with the Snyderverse, uh, was he the Joker, maybe? Like, that's how much I don't know. I loved him in this, and I... I don't love, but... Like, I was really into the movie, I enjoyed this. Uh, but I can definitely see... A what-the-fuck-is-wrong-with-you type thing. I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't know. Oh, so, hold on. So it was a box office bomb. All right, well, I don't know. This is a surprise to me, too. Uh, yeah, I guess I wouldn't um, expect it to be, a, you know, uh, a super success, but I really enjoyed this movie, um, and I, I would recommend it. I don't think it's a um, a failure in that sense. In the, in the same way I enjoy fan movies and things like that this is way better than that in a sense and it's i wouldn't be surprised if it did well in the movies like i just happen to be maybe someone who this actually um resonates with for some reason and like i said it's surprising i don't fucking i have no interest in watching vampire movies and you know that type of thing so this was just something that was mentioned to me a couple of weeks ago i thought the halloween spirit i'd watch it but no well maybe that's another thing no expectations at all uh okay so let's say i paid 18 dollars to see the movie maybe fucking 50 with my girlfriend if i had one and you know what no i i think i know my nerd self and I would enjoy, I enjoy this movie. You know, just going back to certain movies and maybe like, uh, I don't know. Just those movies that become little cult classics. And there was another one that has like, no, the effects weren't even done for the movie Marvel put out a while ago. I think it was called like, uh, Man Thing. <laughs> you know, it's like, you, fucking, you can't even find it. Like, you have to find it on the special sites. And I enjoyed that too. And I don't know, I maybe I'm just trying to balance that critic and just fan who's just sitting there, you know, enjoying a movie and having a different opinion on things. However, yes, I, I know it's flawed in, in many ways that um, you could chalk up to its, uh, you know, writing and, you know, uh, special effect, like the decisions. But I found it to be uh, refreshing. Like, I didn't need fucking hours of silly fucking dialogue and, you know, um, a quarter of the movie devoted to this doctor taking care of him and raising him like children. For me, I didn't know what the fuck was going on. I recognized the actor and I thought immediately he's the real villain behind everything. And the friendship aspect like i bought it yeah it was maybe could have been written a little better here and there but it got me through the movie and like i said i think it felt like someone went through this movie with love and talent and care 
you know, you can see the performances, which again, I'll give praise to Jared Leto and whatever, Matt Smith. It just works for me. So, there you go. Morbius. Marvel Comics movie. Sony driven, I guess, if you want to separate the Sony universe from the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And I, I don't know if you're going to compare it to things. I think it's better than fucking both Venom movies. I mean, I don't know. And just seeing some of these fucking actors, like, who's that guy? Um, Al Madrigal? Like, you know him. You know his voice immediately. And they don't go berserk with these guys. And they've got two cops on the case investigating. And they almost feel like real. Like, Tyrese Gibson's just, like, low speaking, serious all the time, thoughtful and looking. And the other guy cracks a joke once in a while. But. You don't have, like, a fucking 60 minutes devoted to their impact and aspect on the show and the movie. So, again, I'm going to give kudos to all the pieces here being put together by someone super talented and, you know, has maybe an eye for this thing, an eye for detail. So, is it the editor, which is Pietro Scaliar? I don't know. Um, but I recommend Morbius. I don't know what to say. Vampire driven Marvel comics movie, which seems to be getting to be integrated into the Sony universe. So, the Sinister Six was probably what the Vulture is alluding to. And more power to them. I mean, if you look at it like in, in the MCU owned all their fucking properties, like, would, how many movies are they going to put out? And yeah, maybe you could say Marvel, the Spider-Man was done better in this and that. But it's a big world out there. There are people talented and, you know, eager to show what they can do. And I'm going to give props to that. And to that whole cast here and putting everything together. They did the best what they can do. Watch Morbius if you want. Uh, yeah, surprising. So I hope everybody's doing well. And I'll talk to you all next time. Take care.